Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. We begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, brothers and sisters, to, to pray, pray for, for me to the, the Lord, Lord our, our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Rejoicing in this annual celebration of our Lenten observance, we pray, O Lord, that with our hearts set on the Paschal Mysteries, we may be gladdened by their full effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come. Let us return to the Lord. It is He who has rent, but He will heal us. He has struck us, but He will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, He will raise us up to live in His presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord as certain as the dawn in his coming and his judgment shines forth like the light of day he will come to us like the rain like spring rain that waters the earth what can i do with you ephraim what can i do with you judah your piety is like a morning cloud like the dew that early passes away for this reason i smoothed them through the prophets i slew them by the words of my mouth for it is love that i desire not sacrifice and knowledge of god rather than burnt offerings the word of the lord thanks be to god it is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with due sacrifices, burnt offerings, and holocausts. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Please stand. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. One of the, the challenges of our Pope, our, our present Pope, is the call to all Christians in becoming saints, in becoming holy. Bakit? Because it is seen, or it is very evident, that holiness nowadays, or saintly people nowadays, is very much rare. Bibihira kang makakitang taon na banal. Sa panahon natin ngayon, ang hirap. Ang hirap makakita ng ganong tao. No wonder why our Pope has always been very active in promoting persons who are saintly, who live a holy life, to becoming saints. Lalong-lalo na yung mga tao who, who live in our, somehow, present generation. Hindi na yung mga taong sobrang-sobrang tagal na. Ang mga pinoproklamang santo ngayon, ang mga pinoproklamang mga blessed people, are people who live even in our time. Naalala niyo yung Pilipino na pinromote na naman, nasa, nasa, nasa process na in becoming a saint, a simple child. The Pope is doing all of this because he wants to encourage and to challenge all of us, all of the Christians, all of the followers of Christ, in becoming saints, in becoming holy. So the question that we need to answer today, and we need to have an honest and clear answer to this question is this, do we really want to be holy? Do you want to be holy? Do you want to become a saint? Kung titignan natin ang ating mga sarili ngayon, sinasagot ba niya ng oo ang tanong na yon? Kung titignan natin yung mga ginagawa natin sa buhay natin ngayon, ang sinasabi ba niya sa tanong na yon na magpakabanal tayo, maging santo tayo, ay ayaw ko? Ano po kaya ang sagot? But my dear brothers and sisters, if we want to be holy, if we want to be saints, there is one way as prescribed in our readings today. As prescribed sa mga pagbasa natin sa araw na ito. Ano yung sinasabi? What is the way towards holiness? The way towards holiness is knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. Meaning, pagmamahal sa Diyos. 
Because pagmamahal at pagkilala goes together. Kasi kung tutusin, hindi mo nga naman mamamahal, mamahalin yung hindi mo naman kilala. Hindi ba? Kaya nga, pag tinatanong yung isang babae, may boyfriend ka na? Meron. Anong pangalan? Hindi ko alam. Ay, hindi mo boyfriend yun. Iba yun. Ba, diba? Because hindi mo kilala. Hindi mo mamahalin yung taong hindi mo kilala. And so if we want to be holy, we need to deepen our knowledge, our love of God. And how do this happen? How can we accomplish this knowledge of God in our lives? One of the challenges or one of the important aspects of our Lenten observance is prayer. Prayer. And prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, is a way, a very important way, in knowing our God. Because that is what prayer is. Knowing God, deepening our love of God. No wonder why sa ating, sa ating responsorial sum ngayon, ang sinasabi, mercy, not sacrifice. It is mercy I desire, not sacrifice. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Mas pinapalago yung pagkilala sa Diyos more than the offerings that we make. Because that is prayer. Pinapalago ang buhay ng Diyos, ang pagkilala sa Diyos sa mga buhay natin more than the sacrifice that we make, more than the offerings that we make in church. That is prayer. No wonder why that is the prayer also of our Blessed Mother, the Magnificat. My soul magnifies, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Because that is what is prayer all about. It is filling our lives, ang mga buhay natin, sa pagkakakilanlan ng Diyos. Pinupuno natin ang buhay natin sa presensya ng Diyos. Na to the point na ang nakikita sa atin, hindi na yung mga sarili natin, kundi ang Diyos. That is what this prayer is all about. That is authentic prayer. Kaya nga, ang, ang magiging challenge sa ganong klaseng prayer that would lead us to holiness is that egoistic prayer na ipinapakita doon sa parable na sinabi ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo sa araw na ito. Ito yung prayer ng tax collector. What was he doing? Was he truly praying? E sabi nga natin, ang pagpagdarasal e pagkilala ng greatness, ng kabaitan, ng kabutihan, ng kapatawaran ng ating Panginoong Diyos. That is true prayer. But look at the prayer of the Pharisee today. Was it about God? Was it about the goodness of God? Kaya nga, kung mapapansin nyo, no, ang, sina ang sinabi ng ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo, ganito, The Pharisee took up his position, he prepared himself, and spoke this prayer to himself. To himself. Ganun ba tayo magdasal? Pag nagdarasal tayo, patungo sa atin lang? Ganun nagdasal ang pariseyo. When we pray, we pray to God. And we recognize God. Ang pariseyo natin sa Ebanghelyo, hindi. Egoistic ang kanyang prayer. It was about Himself. Lord, napaka mapalad ko talaga. Kasi hindi ako makasalanan katulad ng iba, lalong-lalo na yung tax collector na yan na nasa likod ko. Tingnan mo, Lord, di ka makalapit sa iyo. Makasalanan kasi yan. Ako, mapalan. It was about Himself. It was not about God. It was not about the mercy of God. But it was about Himself. 
E ano pa yung mga variants ng ganong klaseng prayer, ng egoistic prayer? Yung prayer na nagkukumpara lagi sa iba. Lord, bigyan mo naman ako ng maraming kotse. Yung aming kapitbahay, maraming kotse. Ako din. That's an egoistic prayer. Lord, payamanin mo naman ako. Ang yaman-yaman nung ano. Para bang nagbibilang tayo ng wala sa ating mga dasal. Eh mahirap pagbilang ng wala kasi nga wala eh. In prayer, rather than counting all of the things that we don't have and comparing ourselves with others, prayer is more of about counting the blessings that God gave our lives. It is about seeing and knowing the goodness of God in our lives. That is prayer. And that is very important in our Lenten season, in our Lenten observance. At napakaganda ng Lenten season para tayo ay makapagdasal ng tunay at authentic. Yung nga sinasabi kong nakikilala natin lalo ang Diyos sa mga buhay natin. Bakit maganda ang Lenten season? Kasi ang daming mga reminders sa atin, ang daming ipinapakita sa atin ng kabutihan ng Diyos ng awa ng Diyos sa mga buhay natin. Ipinapakita sa Lenten season yung kanyang sakripisyo, even yung kanyang pag-alay ng buhay para tayo masalba. O di ba pagkilala ng Diyos? Di ba dasal? And this is exactly the moment where we are called to true prayer. And this is a wonderful opportunity to become what our Pope is calling all of us, saints, holy people. So my dear brothers and sisters, in, the Lent, in this Lenten season, may our prayers be authentic prayers. Prayers that does not only acknowledge our own efforts, our own needs, but acknowledges the greatness, the goodness, and the forgiveness of God. Paano natin malalaman na punong-puno tayo ng presensya ng Diyos? Paano natin malalaman kung punong-puno tayo ng pagkilanlan sa Diyos sa mga buhay natin? Simple lamang. Tanungin natin yung mga katabi natin. Tanungin natin yung mga kasama sa buhay natin, asawa natin, asawa nyo pala, girlfriend natin, kaklase natin, katrabaho natin, tanungin ninyo, sino ang nakikita nila sa mga buhay ninyo? Mas nakikita ba nila yung sarili mo? O mas nakikita nila ang Diyos sa iyo? Kung mas nakikita nila ang Diyos sa mga buhay natin, then that is a sign that we are in the right path. The path to prayer. The path in knowing deeply our beloved God. Magsitayo po tayong lahat. With contrite and humble hearts, we stand in the presence of God. Let us respond to these intentions with humble and sincere prayer. In every petition, let our answer be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be a sure heaven for sinners and outcasts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That public servants may show special concern for women, children, orphans, the elderly, and the homeless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That believers may deepen their prayer and penance, especially in the season of Lent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may experience the healing power of Christ and thus give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may enjoy light, happiness, and peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions, and we also pray for the intentions of this Mass. Father, you search our hearts and discern our needs. In your mercy, grant what we ask in prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, by whose grace it comes to pass that we may approach your mysteries with minds made pure, grant, we pray, that in reverently handling, handing them on, we may offer you fitting homage. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so, we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Dominic and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threat, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Together we pray, Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, Politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May we truly revere, O merciful God, these holy gifts by which you ceaselessly nourish us 
and may we always partake of them with abundant faith in our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcement. Dear devotees of Our Lady of Manawag, the summer feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on May 4, 2022, third Wednesday after Easter Sunday. The Novena Masses will be scheduled at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 4.30 p.m. from April 25 to May 3, 2022. Additional Mass at 3 p.m. on May 1, Sunday. We invite you to participate in this Novena Masses. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses, you may fill out the form of, at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation where you will be provided with an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website www.manawagminorbasilica.org for the online PAMISA. All names of donors and sponsors will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. God bless you. Please stand. Bago po tayo magtapos ng misa, ako po ay magpapasalamat sa ating lector, sa ating commentator, sa ating acolytes and Eucharistic ministers, at sa inyong lahat po na nakiisa sa misa ito. Maraming maraming salamat. Ingat po tayo sa ating pag-uwi at nawabawin ninyo po ang pagpapala ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Santo Rosario ng Manawag. Huli po, maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We all go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles, our devotees and pilgrims, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.